what are your thoughts on investing in ICOs by using the token metrics ICO ratings and rankings and buying it on CoinList? Okay. Um, well, in general, ICOs haven't been the play this year or in the last two years, really. It was IELs last year. This year, it's been DeFi and projects already trading on exchanges and yield farming. So I think investing via an ICO is very risky uh, because you have no idea what could happen because even good projects typically have been following the same pattern where they, they pump, then they dump. And then you have this period where you can then accumulate a position over time and then it bounces back up again, right? Textbook was Compound. Compound launched. Uh, there was no ICO for that. It was pretty much just, I mean, only... The, Insiders, basically early adopters, uh, like partners, investors, equity investors, they got in. It went up a lot for the for the week or so because it was brand new, it was sexy, it was the, it was a flash in the pan. It crashed. Then I think that's where people who be believe in our project long term can accumulate. And I think that's the textbook way to play an ICO. Um, but most ICOs I've seen on CoinList have been great projects, right? So from, I mean, from a pure technology code perspective, Scale Network comes to mind, uh, Celo comes to mind and others, they've been good. However, they've been, but I would say overvalued. The, the valuations on CoinList have been pretty high. So I think if anything for CoinList, depending on how you how much you have in, in to invest, maybe put a small position into the ICO if you want to, but keep a large amount on the sidelines ready to accumulate after a possible crash or correction, right? I would not put every, your entire capital into the ICO. I think you have to kind of treat it as, let me put maybe 10, 20% into the ICO just to spec, just to speculate and, I, and I'm comfortable with, with that going to zero. Then after the FOMO has died down when it's trading, then maybe allocate the rest of the capital towards accumulating over some time. Uh, Bill? Uh, your perspective on that? Okay, so anything like ICOs, uh, you always have to be careful or mindful of regulatory risk, right? These DeFi tokens, and I think the miracle of Uniswap, where they're literally just sort of dropping the tokens in and creating a liquidity pool and not actually selling the tokens to anybody is... I mean, nothing is bulletproof, but regulators can't nail you for selling tokens if you're not selling tokens, right? <laughs> so you don't want to be invested in something that gets in trouble, okay? So when you, when you play in your ICOs, you don't want to have all your eggs in one basket and all the things that we usually say. And if you get the quick money, just take it, like, don't even think about it. You do an ICO, you invest in it, you get a bunch of money, take it. Because most likely it's going to come back down. You know, like Uni wasn't an ICO, right? But, or even Polkadot, right? Polkadot, people love it. It's still, it has not even gotten anywhere near its high of eight. It's like trading at four something this morning and it looked like it was going to go to zero. Hopefully it's recovered. <laughs> so th there is an opportunity to get in. You don't have to rush in. In other words, the people remember when you buy an ICO, there's someone on the other side, a venture capitalist, a person with sharp teeth going, Oh, look, here he comes. Yeah. <laughs> right here they come. <laughs> okay. So just remember that one on ICOs and IPOs. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Bill. Uh, 